stick ever. Theodore, what's my second favorite stick ever? Yeah. Woo! Give it up for Junior. You know what? I didn't fall once in the last two days. He's coming right along. So, uh, you want a story, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, I love stories. Well, what story should I tell you? Mm, I have a good story. This story is a story that someone told me. Can you guess who told me this story? My favorite guy ever, which is? Absolutely. So this is a story that Jesus told me. And uh, it's a really, 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 really cool story. And I just can't wait to tell it. So I'm just not going to wait to tell it. So I'm just going to start telling it to you, okay? So once upon a time, there was this man. And this man, he was kind of like a jeweler. And he knew all about rocks. And he knew all about pebbles. And he knew all about gold and about silver. And what he did for a living is he sold this stuff to people. So you can come on out, Mr. Merchant. And this guy, he came out one day. And uh, he found a spot on the street to set up his stuff. Because that's what he did. He would set it up. So he would carefully set up each jewel he had. And then he would stop sometimes and look around really quickly to make sure no one was going to take it because this stuff was super valuable. And then he would watch and watch and kept putting out his stuff, putting out his stuff. And he had some really, really nice stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty nice stuff. Um, yeah. And, and so one day he was, he was out here with this stuff and, uh, there was this other guy and this other guy, this other guy, he wanted, he wanted to find a really, really precious jewel. And you know what he did for a living? He traveled all around the world and he looked for really, really special stuff. And he had a whole room in his house full of special rocks and special carvings and little pieces of cool things. And he just loved that. And so when this cool guy, when, when, this, when this guy, we'll call him, we'll call him, what's your name? Judas. Judas. When this guy, name, we'll call him, we'll call him Judy. We'll call him Judy for short. <laughs> Judas, Judy. Yeah, I think Judy's shorter. So we'll call him Judy for short. When Judy came along, he found this merchant guy. What's, what's your name, merchant? My name's Frank. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Frank. So, so when Judy came along, he was so excited when he saw Frank. And he showed his excitement by jumping in the air five times. <laughs> And that's what he always did when he got excited. But he was extra excited, so he did it again five times. Yes. And then he went running over to Frank's stuff, and he started looking at it. But remember about Frank, he's super protective. And so Frank jumped up, and he grabbed Judy, and he pushed him away. And he said, don't touch my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> and then Frank, he went and sat down by his stuff. But he actually sat on his stuff. Because he loved his stuff so much that he sat on it. But it kind of hurt. <laughs> and so then he moved to the side again. But he watched Judy very carefully. And so this time, Judy came along. And he was still super excited because he had some, Frank had some really cool stuff. So this time, Judy was a little scared this time. So Judy just gave five little excited hops. And he went up and he said, Frank. Frank. How much do you want for that rock? How much do you want for that rock? And Judy slapped him. I mean, Frank slapped him. And he said, don't you touch that. Don't you touch that. And, uh, 
And Judy said, oh, man, it's, it's all right. I'm not going to take it. I'll pay you for it. I'll pay you for it. It's all right. I'm not going to take it. And Frank said, hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? And they bartered. And they bartered loudly in the microphones. No, you can't have it for a hundred dollars. It's worth way more than a hundred dollars. It's worth ten at the most. Absolutely not. <laughs> No, what do you, you, what do you want for you this? It, you you what do you want it. for this cat? That is five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. <laughs> so after that went on for some time, and then they finally, finally went for, when Judy had looked at everything. He said, "You know what? This is cool, but not that cool. Don't you have anything else, cool. Frank?" Anything else, Frank? Anything, anything, anything. Anything at all. Well, maybe one thing, but it's not for sale. Judy said, let me see it. Let me see it. I got stuff. I got stuff. I'm not sure about that. I mean, it's going to take a lot of stuff. I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> well. And so, and so, Frank, he finally, he got up. Frank uh, got up and he stood on his stuff so Judy couldn't get it and he reached into his pocket and he left his very 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 most precious thing peep out and he slapped Judy but it was difficult but he still did no it no touchy my stuffy it's the lost bracelet of Georgia and, and, and Judy stared at it for five whole seconds. And then he collapsed. And then he, then he slowly got back up. That's a really nice bracelet. He said, all, all, all right, Frankie, we, we got to work out something here. We got to work out something here. And so that bracelet. Judy went and he started digging out his stuff. Frankie said, nope, not enough. Nope, not enough. So Judy went into his backpack again, and he got some more stuff. They fought wars over water before. Frankie said, nope, not enough. It's been used. <laughs> you have a wife, Frankie? I've got two beautiful dresses right here for your Persian wife. I'm not married. <laughs> Now that is pretty sweet though. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm kidding. Water balloons. Ooh. And this this just went on and on and Now this looks interesting. And, uh, and Judy got more and more desperate and he started stowing him more and more stuff. And he started putting it all in a pile. And he started digging out stuff. And he started thinking, man, what will it take, Frankie, for me to get that? Dax. What what is this? <laughs> It'll make you smell better. Maybe how, how, how you'll have a start? wife then. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to poison me? Ew! Oh, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. So Judy went and Jesse's just dug out his pockets. Ooh. It's the latest. My phone. It's awesome. Oh yes, oh yes. My notepad. Keep it coming, keep it coming. <laughs> My... We might have a deal here. And, and, and so Judy went and he put all his stuff on his pile, except for his last chest. His last special chest he had. And Judy said, I'll give you all that stuff except for oh, my that, last chest. This, this, this is my, my very precious. But he said, very, all very that precious. stuff, Frankie, for the bracelet. All the rest is yours for, for the last bracelet of Georgia. <laughs> well, you know what, Judy? This is almost enough. Just a little bit more, and it's yours. Fine. Here's my hair. Uh, ew. That is so nasty. Take that away. Ew. He gave his hair. He actually gave his hair. He gave his glasses. And he gave his little brown sash. 
and then he said, okay. Frankie, is that enough? Is that enough, Frankie? Just right. a little bit more. And so Judy, Judy went, he looked, he looked at his last chest, and then he looked back at the bracelet of Georgia. Then he looked at the chest. It shines like the sun. And he said, what am I doing? What am I doing? This is the bracelet of Georgia. This is the bracelet of Georgia. And so he got up and he jumped up five times, which y'all know what that means. Yes! 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 And he said, absolutely, you can absolutely, have all my stuff. You can have all my stuff and and in my chocolate bars. And he even ripped off his yellow robe. <laughs> but thankfully, it was not all he had on. <laughs> and Frankie looked at Judy, and he looked him deep in the eyes. And he said, for all this stuff, I will give you the price. For all this stuff, I will give you this bracelet. And he got it out. He started giving it. They said, no, 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 I can't do that. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. No. And then he looked back at the big pile Fine. of stuff and he gave it. Yes! 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 <laughs> and Judy was so happy. Yes! <laughs> he gave so many jumps and he ran halfway across the world. And, yes! and he just disappeared yes! with his bracelet. Yes! And he was so thrilled. And Frankie he just kind of looked around confused. And then he chuckled a little bit. And then he picked up all his stuff. And he went home. And he had a lot of stuff. I don't know why I made this deal. I need a mule. But he did have a lot of stuff. And so he proceeded to uh, carry all his stuff home. So, did you like that story? Yeah. Give it up for friends. You know what? I, I need your attention again right here, all right? I need you to listen up. Because this is a really, really important story. I'm gonna tell you why. And, and it has something else to do with Jesus, all right? There was one time that me, I was with Jesus and some of our other friends, we call them the disciples. Bart was there, Matt was there. You remember those guys? We were all having, we were all having dinner with Jesus. You know what, after dinner, after dinner, Jesus went and he did something. I'll be back. <coughs> you know what Jesus did after dinner? We were just having a good time together, having supper. And you know what? After we were done eating, Jesus just got really quiet. Everybody got really quiet. We weren't really sure what was going on. And, and you know what Jesus did? He took some bread. And he said, here, take this. And he gave some to Matt. And he gave some to Bart. And he gave some to me. And you know what Jesus said? He said something really strange. He said, here, take this and eat it. He said, this is my body. That's a weird thing to say, right? It was just bread, it wasn't his body. That's confusing. So we ate it, then you know what Jesus did? Jesus went, he took a cup, had some juice in it, and he took a sip of it, and he passed it around. He said, here, drink some of this. So Bart had some, and Matt had some, the rest had some, I had some. You know what he said? He said, here, drink this. This is my blood. It was just juice and bread. He said it was his blood and his body. What on earth did he think he meant by that? That's a weird thing to say, right? 
And we kind of looked at each other and man, we were we weren't really sure what he meant by that. But you know what? A few days later we found out what he meant by that. And that's another story that I don't have time for tonight, but we will get to it. But but I'll give you I'll give you a little preview. How's that? A little preview? Well the preview is that Jesus he actually died. Did you know that? Jesus actually got killed. And you know what he meant when he said, here, take this. This is my blood. Here, take this. This is my body. What he meant by that is that he died for us. And that he was killed for us. And that his blood actually came gushing out of his side and his hands for us. And when he did that, at that supper it was a representation of that and he was saying he was saying you know what i'm going to give my body for you and i'm going to give my blood for you i'm going to give myself for you and that's what he meant by that but i have another little illustration that i think you guys will enjoy and i think it'll help you understand this more can i have my helper come out So you know what? You remember in prayer station how Danny's been talking about that dried up branch? And you know what? This is kind of like the dried up branch, except it's different. It's a it's a cup of really nasty water. You know what? Our lives without Jesus are like this. When we sin and when we lie and when we have all this junk in our lives, this is pretty much how we are. It's kind of like that dried up branch. It's just full of junk. You know what? We talked about... Remember a couple nights ago we talked about that story about the son that ran away and when he came home the father was so excited and we talked about how that is like Jesus and Jesus wants a relationship with you and when you come to Jesus and you say, Jesus I want you in my life, he's just like that father, he's so excited, remember? And then last night we talked about Peter and we talked about how when he looked at Jesus he could do the impossible and he could actually walk on water. And what did we say that Peter had? you remember the word we used? Faith. Faith, exactly. And I use the illustration of the trust fall and how we know that God's behind us, right? Because sometimes we're like on the top of that ladder there and we're standing there and we're thinking, I don't know if I can trust God or not when he's behind us. But you can trust God. You can always trust God. So I want to talk about that a little bit more. So this is like us, right? Can everybody see this? This is like us. And we know this is a representation of Jesus, right? He's clean, he's pure, he's perfect, he's holy. And you know what? Sometimes we come to Jesus and we say, Jesus, I'm all messed up. My life's disgusting. You know what? I want you in my life. You know what happens? He comes into our lives. He comes into our lives. Ew. You know what comes out of our lives? All this junk. What's up with that? We. We added Jesus to our lives. I, I thought we wanted that. But you know what? You know what you need to do before you can come to Jesus? What needs to happen before you come to Jesus? You need to have faith in Jesus, but there's also something called repentance. And repentance means that you turn. So if I'm walking this way and I repent, now I'll be walking this way, right? And that's a turning, and we turn away from our sin. And, and so coming to Jesus, we have to say, you know what, Jesus, I want you in my life. And so I'm not going to lie anymore. I'm going to give that up. Say, you know what, Jesus, I used to just live for myself and always do what I want. I'm going to give that up. And Jesus, I, I don't always get along with my friends, and, and sometimes I'm really selfish. But I don't want that in my life anymore. I'm done with that. Say, Jesus, I, I used to cheat in school, but I don't want that anymore. And we give that up. And all these things in our life, we give them up. You know what? When we come to Jesus like this, you know what happens? When Jesus comes into our lives, look at that. And what I want you to remember is that you can be like this. And you can have Jesus in your life, and you can have a holy life. But you need to turn, and you need to ask Jesus to forgive you from your sins. 
and to get rid of your sin so you can be like this. All right? Does that make sense to you? Yes. I would really encourage you to ask your group leaders what that means if you don't understand it. All right? I'm sure they would be happy to explain it for you. But that's all the time I have tonight. But I have a lot more stories I want to tell. So if you let me, maybe I can come back tomorrow night. Will you let me do that? Okay, I'll see if I can work that out. All right.